Hello guys, and welcome to Didactics Online. My name is Rob Kawa, this is Brandon Parker, and today we're going to be talking about the pelvis. So to start, we have a model here just to show you a couple things. Okay? Now, the pelvis is actually made up of the bones of the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis, and they articulate at the sacroiliac joint with the sacrum and the pubic symphysis up front. Now, to diagnose the pelvis, you need a couple of landmarks that are going to be easy to show you guys on the skeleton model here. Right up front, we have a good bony prominence that can easily be felt on everyone, known as the ASIS. We call it the anterior superior iliac spine. You're going to need this one for sure. On the back, you have something similar that can be palpated called the PSIS, the posterior superior iliac spine. Those two findings right there and a good test of laterality to determine what side your dysfunction on is basically all you need. Now, if I disarticulate the skeleton, I can show you what the joint space looks like in the SI joint. It's very similar to a topographic map, and I like to explain it more of like mountains and valleys. Some of the joint space projects into the SI joint, and some almost dips down. So, because we have so many different capabilities in our movements, you can pivot, run, shift, that joint space will get locked up in different directions. So you actually have several kinds of dysfunctions possible. Sometimes you can have rotations, They'll either move anterior or posterior. Sometimes you have flares, which the pelvis will actually get closer to midline or further apart. And you can either have shears, where the entire bone can move up in a superior manner or down inferiorly. So we're going to take a look at what Brandon has today and run through all the different diagnoses for you. Now, first off, we need that test of laterality to determine what side we're looking at. So, we're going to do a simple test called the standing flexion test. Brandon, can you stand up for me? And face this direction. Now, the standing flexion test, I'm going to be on Brandon's PSIS, like we mentioned before. It's a good posterior landmark. I want his feet a couple inches apart. So, go ahead and hug my foot. And I'm going to get him to bend forward. Go ahead and bend forward for me, Brandon. Now, I see that my thumb on the left PSIS moved further than the right, which tells me that the joint on his left was locked up in those peaks and valleys we discussed. And because of that, it was pulled forward more because it didn't have the normal body mechanic motion it should have. So I know that he has a dysfunction on his left side. Now that's not the only test that we can actually do to determine the laterality. There's another one we call the AP compression test, where I can have Brandon lie down. And I can spring on his pelvis. It'll lock up in the same area of the joint, and I can push down from the top, and it should line up on the left side. Now, what I'm feeling for is it to be more resistant. So when I push down, it, the joint feels hard as rock on the left, and there's a little bit of a give on the right. So it seems to match up with our findings. I know that he has a problem on the left side. Now we go back to the ASIS and PSIS, and we're going to look at the heights and figure out whether he's got rotations, flares, or shears. So I look on the first one, the ASIS to me looks like it's a little high on the left when compared to the right. So this already has me thinking that he either has a posterior rotation or possibly a shear. Now roll over on your stomach for me, Brandon. When I look at his PSIS heights, he seems a little high on the left compared to the right. So that's all we need for a good diagnosis. I know that Brandon has a left superior shear because both the ASIS and PSIS are high in relation to the right side. So we'll show you how to treat that later, but we're going to talk about a couple of the other diagnostic findings. Can you roll back over for me? If Brandon had an anterior rotation on the left side, I would expect to find the ASIS would be more inferior compared to the right, and the PSIS would be high on the left side in comparison to the right. And you would almost expect the whole bone to be tipped forward. If you had a posterior rotation, it would be just the opposite. The ASIS on the left would be high, and the PSIS on the left would be low in comparison to the right side. And that whole bone would be shifted back. Now, you can look according to the midline, by having your partner put their hand upside down and almost bracing it right down the xiphoid process. The umbilicus is not a good midline component to look at because your partner could have different kind of surgical procedures that would pull the fascia or tissue. So, I'm looking at his ASIS. 
And Brandon's left ASIS is a little closer towards the midline than it is on the right. Okay? That tells me that he has more of an inflare, and this side of the pelvis is shifted in in comparison to the opposite one. If he had an outflare, I would expect just the opposite, and this ASIS would actually be further from the midline and a little bit more lateral. You can get something like that with more of a, a pivoting shift type movement with the, the pelvis rotated out. Okay, so those are your anteriors, uh, posteriors, and then your inflares and outflares. Now, we already talked about the superior shear. If you find both the landmarks on your test of laterality that are actually lower than the corresponding side, you're looking at more of an inferior shear. Actually, see more of these in trauma than anything else. So, that's our quick diagnosis of Brandon. One quick thing you want to always remember when checking is you want to have your patient centered and midline and always reset the pelvis. So there's two quick ways you can do that. You can lift the knees up, have them lift their butt off the table and back down, or you can just grab the bottom of the legs and position your patient evenly with a nice swinging motion and pull. You want to make sure everything is even and not displaced so that your findings are accurate. Now, with that information, we'll be able to treat Brandon in the following procedures. Thanks, and enjoy us next time on Didactics Online.